welcome to another one of those great cold and darks. This is the updated A300. Yeah, this is the uh, airplane from Anybuilds. It is uh, nicely updated. There's some new things that you can do with this airplane. I gotta tell you, this is one of my favorites, partly because uh, the cargo companies fly like three of these things into uh, my hometown airport every day. So one of my favorite things to do is start the day with a cup of coffee and fortunately got a place to, you know, be able to watch these airplanes land. So I get to see, you know, two, three of these uh, a day, which is kind of nice. Hello and welcome to the 757 Spy Flight Deck. Great to see you. Thank you for uh, tuning in for another one of these cold and dark videos here on YouTube. I sure appreciate you stopping by. Uh, I got to tell you, the uh, the airplane is really one of those cool airplanes. Uh, and the thing that I really like about what AnyBuilds does is they don't just model the airplane. And modeling the airplane is important. But they also, um, well, they also model uh, some of the things that go along with these airplanes. Like the, uh, you know, the way you actually load and manage the loads of the airplanes. Uh, so you get to learn more about cargo operations. Of course, one of their biggest ones is the, uh, is the AnyBuilds Beluga, which is a really amazing airplane too. So uh, anyhow, welcome aboard and thank you for uh, coming on in. As usual with these, uh, with these cold and dark videos, uh, let me uh, show you just a few things about what's going on. We'll start right here with today's flight plan. We're in the uh, FedEx Airbus A306. We're going Memphis to Atlanta. Two really nice airports uh, that you can pick up. Uh, the departure time scheduled is 9.15 a.m. We are on the FedEx cargo stands. Add-ons that I use for this one. I'm using Sim Toolkit Pro, Sim Brief, and Sky Vector. Uh, I'm also using uh, Navigraph Data and ADP Charts for this flight. And then the Freeware Better Pushback is uh, what it is that I'm using. A couple of uh, things, I'm keeping these as usually super simple. The goal is to get somebody that is relatively new to this airplane and not necessarily an aviation professional able to start the airplane, taxi, take off, fly, land, and get to the gate. We can jump down all the rabbit holes later. And believe me, there are a ton of rabbit holes uh, that, you can, uh, that you can jump down. Be sure and get your uh, charts all ready to go. And finally, I do like to say that this, uh, this is not about being the right way versus the wrong way. This is just what works for me. And I'm here to have a really good time and learn as much as I can about these amazing airplanes. First timers help. If you haven't done one of these cold and darks with me, you just fly along. So one of the neat things about a YouTube video is you can stop and start the YouTube video. So you can even roll it back. If I did something a little too fast, you could roll it back. That's actually how I learn how to do a lot of these things. Um, after you do this flight, I really want to suggest that you take this on a flight out of your hometown airport. So Memphis to your hometown airport or, you know, a big cargo hub in Europe or in Asia, fly to your hometown airport. That just kind of reinforces it and makes it a little more personal for you. Again, pause, restart the video as you need it. And then please, if you feel like it, join, uh, join us over on the Twitch Spy Flights. We are flying six days a week right now at 1900 Zulu, uh, Tuesday through Sunday. You are always welcome to fly along. It is an amazing community. And I'm really lucky uh, to have made some of the great friends over on Twitch. So come on over and have some fun. Here's flight plan, uh, departing Memphis 36 Center. It's a beautiful day in Memphis today. Our uh, cruise flight level is flight level 330 doing the BB King departure, a couple of checkpoints, and then we're doing Glavin going into Atlantis 27 right. Uh, okay, there's problem number one right there. And let's just jump right in and let me show you uh, what I mean by problem number one. So uh, on my charts here, uh, let's take a look at Atlanta. Okay, this is something that Simbrief will do. Most most of the time that they're going to bring you in, they're going to bring you in on 27 left or something like that. Thing is, is FedEx hangs out here at the northern cargo area. So they would, uh, uh, Atlanta uh, uh, traffic control, they're going to try and bring the FedEx planes in on 26 right or 8 left. 
That's shorter taxi time. They're trying to help uh, FedEx save gas, okay? So 2-6 right is, uh, the air, is, is what we're going to be doing with that. So I've already made a change to the flight plan today, and that change is we're going to be landing on 2-6 right. Uh, flight time should be only around 48 um, minutes. Our flight distance is 348 miles. This is a really great training route. Uh, for us today. So I say uh, jump right in and let's uh, let's get this airplane going. This is a cold and dark airplane. I have gone and set up my settings. So really the only thing that we've got to do is go and climb aboard the airplane. Um, what you have to do though is you've got to go and uh, you can't just, um, you know, release the camera and walk over here and, you know, do the steps and stuff like that. You actually have to go into the airplane. There are some airplanes and the, the developers are getting so good with them that you could actually open doors and put up, you know, air stairs and stuff before you even get in the airplane. So if you really want to do some immersion, uh, you can do that. But we actually have to hit the magic button and get into the best seat in the house. And that's this one right here. And we're going to go over here and let's go to uh, the uh, main uh, EFB here. This is what it's going to look like when you start. Uh, remember, uh, do set up your settings. A uh, couple of things that I do. I do link the uh, STD, the FDs, and the barometers. I put all those together. This airplane is designed for two pilots, okay? But you're only one. And if you're going to take this into a VATSIM event, you don't need to be setting three different altimeters, okay? You don't need to deal with both of the... Um, you don't need to deal with both of the... Um, uh, barometers, the flight directors, and everything. Other than that, I just kind of leave things uh, real. Be sure and set your SimBrief username right in here on the second page. And if you'd like your airplane to uh, yell at you, you can turn on RAAS and it can, hey, uh, what's the word? Harass you? I, I don't, anyway, um, you also, I real seriously, if you don't have Hoppy A cars, go over and uh, I think it's hoppy.nl. We'll look at that on uh, on the flight. But get yourself a Hoppy uh, ACARS logon. Uh, if you're a live streamer, you don't want to click this button because that's going to show your private logon. You don't want to do that. Uh, and then finally, here on the radio panel, the CPDLC function, you need to turn that on. I also suggest, suggest an auto save interval. Right now, I'm set to 120 seconds. Uh, I don't know if that's the perfect way to go, but that's that's what it is that I've got set up. And those are my settings. That's as simple as those settings are. So from there, let's go ahead and start doing the things that we can do. You could also go to a panel state and you could hit the cold and dark button. And that's just one of the things that I also like to do. Go to ground ops, ground services. And really, as soon as you load in your flight simulator, especially in some X-plane airports, you're on a slope. And your airplane might start rolling. So go and, you know, either grab your parking brakes as fast as you can or throw out some chocks. And so I've got the chocks in place. Beyond that, the other thing I'll do is I'm going to call for external power. I'm going to call for air stairs. I'm going to call for a fuel truck. Notice I did not do the loader yet. There's a reason for that. We can go and return now, and now we're going to go and do the load sheet page. Now, when you do your flight plan, uh, that you get your flight plan from SimBrief, uh, and I get mine through Sim, Tool Sim Toolkit Pro. Easy for me to say. It's kind of early in the morning, so, um, you know, have a full cup of coffee ready to go. Very important flight, uh, very important flight gear uh, to have here in your Sim cockpit. I use uh, the uh, United Airlines uh, 2018, I believe, it, format which you can select via Sim Toolkit Pro or SimBrief. This is just the one I use. I've been promising myself I'm going to learn the Lido style of flight plans, uh, which a lot of real world pilots use, but I just haven't gotten to that. But here's what you want. You're looking for anything that's labeled this, ZFW. That is your zero fuel weight. And uh, our zero fuel weight today is 123.0. And by the way, as usual, I go over here and I uh, have my little text file here. I will include a copy of this text file in the description of this video. So you can copy and paste this into your own notepad and then use it as you want. This is an extremely handy uh, thing to have, especially if you're in VATSIM for uh, jotting down notes, especially if you don't want to go through uh, several forests of paper and pens, which you can do. Zero fuel weight. It says 123.038 kgs. 
Uh, this is an Airbus, you do it in kgs. So all of my stuff is in kgs here. And so for zero fuel, what you notice, it's got three numbers, a point and, a, and another dash. So what you're gonna do is go one, two, three, point zero. Take the first three numbers, put a point and a zero. Hit enter, and then that should be good. Next thing you're gonna do is fuel on board, FOB. And our FOB here on this is what's called planned gate fuel. And that's those numbers here. And you want one, two point, uh, it's one, it's 12 point, 12,188 kgs of fuel. I told you it was early here. So what you're gonna do is take the first two numbers, one, two point one, and that is your fuel. Now, if I run a VATSIM event, I would be adding fuel to that number. If I was doing a cross the pond or a long haul, I'm gonna add fuel to that number take a little bit of extra. So let's go and do 12.8, hit enter. Now we're gonna go and hit load, payload and fuel. The computer will start computing. Okay, and it's already gone and done this. See where it says CG here, 26.8? I'm going to make note of that here in my notes right here. I even have a spot for this. So 26.8. Okay, so I got that over there and that's set. Now we've got our load set. I'm gonna go over here and return. Let's go back to ground services. Let's go down to the loader and let's request a loader. Now let's go outside the airplane and see kind of what we got going on. Oh my goodness, look at this. We've got a door open. We've got air stairs. Hey, we, we, we can actually kind of get into the airplane. So uh, you can see the very, very big cargo door opening. You can see a loader coming up here. Uh, you can also see this is uh, a loader scenery. One of the things that I'd like to suggest, you know, to uh, um, uh, developers is I know you want to put some ground junk out there to make the airports look a little bit less bare, but you don't have to put a loader at every spot. Uh, I just suggest, especially because now uh, developers like any builds are starting to um, put light loaders and air stairs and stuff like that. I think that's kind of cool. I'll also do a plea to uh, scenery developers to be sure and include an option for no static aircraft traffic and stuff like that. For big VATSIM events, that cuts down the number of gates you can go to. And if you look over here, you can see our big cargo containers are starting to show up and the uh, Innybuild is gonna start loading this up. So they've really started to add a couple of things to uh, the airplanes, which I think are really exciting. Uh, it just adds a little bit more immersion. And it, it's a great way to learn a little bit about, you know, how it is that companies like F FedEx fly uh, these vintage Airbuses and, you know, how to do that sort of thing. And, you know, if you're young and you want to be a FedEx pilot, this is pretty cool. So now that the loader is there, we're going to go ahead and hit the load button. So now it's gonna actually start loading stuff up, okay? So now we've done all of that, it's time for us to play pilot and we get to start doing the things that we love to do and that's start flipping buttons. So let's kind of go on over here to the power controls and here is the on switch for an Airbus A300. One, two, three batteries. All right, looking good there. We do have external power available, so I'm gonna pop that in too. There is no galley, so I'm just gonna hit the shed button there. That's just gonna turn that out, turn that off. We're gonna keep going down here. We, uh, like most Airbuses, boy, that's loud. Like most Airbuses, there's two nav and logo light systems. There are a variety of things that you can do with this. Uh, some pilots use the nav and logo light system to indicate which pilot is flying. So if, if the pilot is flying, they use nav and logo light system number one. If the co-pilot, number two, they're identical. The uh, other thing you could do is you could do it by days of the week. So today that I'm recording this is uh, the 14th, happy Valentine's Day, uh, and that is an even day. So let's make it an even day and we're gonna use nav and logo light system number two. And if you go outside your airplane, you should see if it was dark, you'd see logo lights. If you look at the wingtips, just a little bit, you can see we have lights on. Look at that. You can see some lights on there. Let's see if I can get in just a little bit closer. Look at that, there's our red lights. And again, Airbus puts two separate systems on there. So uh, we're all good to go with nav and logo lights. And so those are nicely set. 
Uh, that's the only other thing. If it were cold at the airport today, I mean really cold outside with snow and stuff, I might start turning on my window heaters right now. We've got ground power and that would just start warming a few things up here in the airplane. And if you look down here, the airplane is slowly starting to come to life. Next thing that I'm going to do is come down here to this panel right by the pilot's left knee. And it's uh, captain and center instrument lights. And I'm going to turn this up. You notice how the backlighting, that's called integrated lighting. And it just makes, see, you turn it off. It's, it's okay. You can read it. Turn it on. And it makes it easier to read. And I think that that just makes it nicer. I'm also going to go here and we're going to turn up the main uh, the main uh, instrument panel floodlights. And if you look, you can see now all of the instruments, the, the backlighting helps you see it better. Next thing I'm gonna do is come down here and we're gonna go to uh, pedestal and panel. So we're gonna backlight that, see how the pedestal's coming up? And now we're gonna turn this up. This is the upper panel. I'll turn it up to about the same thing. And if you look there, now you can see we've got integrated lighting uh, that's popped up there. The last thing I'm gonna do is this knob down here. I'm gonna turn that up and that's gonna turn the integrated lighting up here on the uh, flight control unit, the autopilot. And so we got that all nicely set up. So there's your first three steps. Now then, if you've successfully set up your Hoppy ACAR system, we're gonna be just like the real pilots. And instead of entering in all of our waypoints, we're going to hit ACAR's main. And if you've entered your uh, uh, spot sim brief username, uh, then uh, it should appear there, and all you do is come over here and hit Company Root. And it flashes, and that's all you got to do. Now, if you look up at the McDo, uh, I think they called these FMSs in the old days, but it says Company Root Uplink Done. Ooh, that's pretty cool. But let's not finish up here yet. Let's go back down here, go and do Wind Data. Pending. See, now we have an opportunity while it's pending to have a sip of coffee. Ah, look at that. Wind data has been received. So we're going to clear this and insert the wind data. A car's wind data inserted. Let's go ahead and clear that. This is pretty cool. Now then, let's continue on. Let's do A car's, I think it's ATC. Let's do a weather request. And we're not on VATSIM right now, so we're not going to get the eight is, but if we were on VATSIM right now and there was air traffic control at Memphis, we could hit eight is and we would get a digital printout of their eight is. That is huge. That is really helpful. And it's something that you definitely want to make use of. That's what makes this a favorite aircraft of mine for a big VATSIM event right now. So METAR, we are at KMEM. Memphis. I'm going to put that into the airports. Let's hit send. And now look at that. It's we're gone and gotten our ATIS, and this is the current ATIS too. So Memphis Airport, winds are 100 at 4, 10 miles visibility. It's clear skies. Temperatures 4 degrees, dew points minus 3, the altimeter 3, double 3033. And then there's some remarks and tempo information, but see where it says print? Oh, you hear that? Look down here. Look at this. I, okay, some people might look at this as some goofy, stupid little thing, you know, a little animation. But guess what? That's the ATIS. This is the information I need to play pi to be a, like a real pilot here, okay? So watch, I've got my pointer on the paper. Listen. And if you look up here, there is your ATIS. There, there, is, your, there is your METAR. There's your ATIS. I'm, that is another huge thing, especially for a VATSIM event. And remember, I, it's a huge time saver. This is this is this cockpit's meant for two people, okay? I don't have time to do, you know, to sit and listen to the radio, ATIS or the the radio METAR. That is absolutely out freaking standing. So, excuse me while I geek out about that, but any builds, well done. What's that sound? Let's go outside and see what's going on. Oh my gosh, the ground crew is done. They are closing the big door. So they're closing the big door. That's pretty good. And so we can, and it makes a little sound so you can see, yep, the door's closing. Soon as the door closes, go back over here and let's hit remove loader. Cool. So now the loaders are all going to go away and we'll take this back over here. All right. So with all of that done, it's time to go and start doing some buttons with the uh, FMS. Company root uplink is done. Let's clear that. 
Let's go to the FMS. This is where you check your navigation data. Okay, so if you are using Navigraph or NDP nav data and you've done it correctly, this should be your latest active navigation database. So that's a good thing to check. Make sure that, you know, it's not what I like to call Navigraph day. So go and do that. If that's good, then I'm gonna look up here and we're gonna tilt all the way up to the top. Oh, we're really, and I bet the pilots, it's really, you know, looking up like that. But let's go ahead and this is uh, uh, IRS-1, turn it to nav. It says it's on the battery. This is also when I do my uh, fire checks. So I'm gonna go and check here. The uh, squib agent light works on the APU fire system. I'm gonna hold the loop test. There's loop A, loop B, and let's listen for fireworks. There we go, that's good. Let's slide over here. This is ADIR's system two. It's on the battery. While that's going and doing its little power up, let's take check the squib lights. Let's do loop A, loop B, and fireworks test on engine two. Looking good. Let's do IR number three. It's on the battery. Let's go and do the agent lights. Both the squib lights turn on. Turn on loop A, loop B. That's just hold it until the fireworks fire off. And then loop B should stay lit up a little bit more. Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna go and do the flight recorder. So ground control, that just means that the flight recorder is now recording. In case I do something stupid and blow up the airplane, the flight recorder will record whatever stupid thing I might have said. And all of this is looking good. Airplane is coming to life. We're on external power. Now might be a good time. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my window heaters. It's a little chilly today. So we can go ahead and do that. While all of this is going on, let's go down here. And now it says align IRS. So go to the init page and see where it says align IRS, click it. Don't, don't clear this, this notification until you do that. I have forgotten to do that. And that adds another eight minutes to my flight departure time. So a little annoying. All of our flight plan is in except for the alternate airport. You find your alternate airport right here. Our alternate airport is KBNA. So let's go ahead and put in KBNA. And there's the alternate and return. And now all of this is looking good. Now we can go and start putting, plugging in the, in the flight plan and you can go and see it's Kermi, Hutch, uh, Sna, and Russia. And that's our flight plan. Okay, it doesn't have the SIDS and STARS in there yet, but that's, that's there, there's our waypoints. It's even got our flight levels in there too. So let's click Memphis, SID. If we were on VATSIM, we might be getting a different runway. Let's just go with what uh, SimBrief has given us today. And SimBrief says three, six, center. So we get a little bit of a taxi, that's okay. There's three, six, center. Okay, from there, we're doing the BB King departure. Okay, and we're gonna do Kermi because we know that that's in our flight plan too. So BB King, Kermi, and three, six, center. And let's go ahead and insert that into the flight plan. Now, we like to be like real pilots here. So, to be like the real pilots, we're gonna go through our flight plan and, and, and uh, check the map. So to do this, go over here and switch from map to plan. I'm gonna turn on constraints and I'm gonna leave it at, um, I think that's 15 miles. I'm also gonna go down here to the map and click it and it's gonna pop it out. Now let's go back to the FM FMS and there's our departure. And so we're gonna kind of go down there and there's our departure going out. If there were altitude and speed constraints, they would show up in pink. There's Kermi, there's Hutch, there's Sna, there's Russia, and there's Atlanta. Now, and it also even has uh, BNA now as our alternate uh, uh, airport. So let's go to ATL and let's do the, uh, it says star, this is our approach. So again, we've changed our runway we're going to be using runway 26 right. So let's look for a runway 26 right. There's 26 right. Okay, now we know that our approach is gonna be Glavin 1. There's Glavin 1. And we're coming in via Russia. And now we got Haynes or Zello. What's that all about? This is why you get your charts done in advance. So here's the star. Okay, so we're gonna come in, there's Glavin. There's rain, cloud, swept, Kimmy, and Kevy. After that, let's look down at our runway. 
And so there's Zello and there's Haynes. So there's two transitions here. Why don't we go ahead and just choose Haynes here? So let's just put in Haynes. We don't need to do the full transition. Glavin, Russia, Haynes, ILS 26, right? Insert that into the flight plan. It's gonna put you back at the top here. And so let's just page through again, make sure there's not a root discontinuity. The real pilots would probably hold the paper right up next to the map and the, there and just make sure it's all correct. There's Ruth, Jackson, Maddox, there's Glavin, there's Southern or Slytherin, depending upon whether or not you're a Harry Potter fan. Hog, Rain, Cloud, Swept, Kimmy, Kevy, and then Haynes coming in. So we got vectors. There is going to be a discontinuity between that. Uh, you can. Some, some FMSs will let you clear it. I don't remember which ones. Let's see if, we, if this will let it clear us. Not allowed. So we just clear that, and there's going to be the uh, discontinuity in there for vectors coming on in. That will be our vector vector. And then we keep coming on down, and there's the um, uh, ILS, and it even plugs in the missed approach. So missed approach, right turn, and hold at Dallas. Go to the top of the flight plan. Now let's go and be like real pilots, and we're gonna hit the secondary flight plan. There's two ways to do this. You can copy the active plan. I usually just do K-M-E-M -E slash K-M-E-M. I don't know if this is the right way or the wrong way to do it. It's just the way that I've been doing it. That puts in Memphis to Memphis. Go to the secondary. Go to the arrival. Go to star. And go ahead and get your landing run, your departure runway, which is ILS 36 center. And just insert that. No SIDs, no stars, no nothing. So what happens is if we lose an engine, now all of a sudden this is preloaded and ready to go. So we could go and, oh my gosh, we've got an engine problem. Go to the secondary flight plan, go direct Nesbitt, and we can come back in and we're golden for that landing. Okay, so that's good. We have a flight plan in there. This is looking good. Let's go ahead and click the center of the map. And that's about the only time that I'll ever pop out a map like that. Going over here, we can go and uh, we are done with the fuel truck. We know we're done fueling. So let's go ahead and click the fuel truck. Let's also go ahead and click push back. And now I'm gonna hit start. Now, this is a little bit awkward sometimes. If you're, if you're on VATSIM, you ought to try and figure out, you know, are they gonna make you push tail east, tail south, tail north, or something like that. So this might get you into an awkward box if you don't call it the right way. But if we were on VATSIM, Please show me where you want to go. I think that they would tell us to go and do this. I just like to set this stuff up now. And this is actually particularly handy. Because we're getting ready to fire up this airplane. We're getting ready to go. And so if we're going to go and make sure that our parking brakes are connected, our, pull, our parking brakes are on, they can hook up and be ready to go when we are. So I'm, call, I'm getting this process started now. Okay, let's go ahead and look over here and see what's going on. Everything's good. Let's uh, start the APU. So there's the master. Fuel pump says low pressure. When the pressure is uh, light goes out, you can start up the APU, come out behind the airplane, and you can probably hear the APU starting up in just a sec. I hear a jet engine going. You can also do another sip of coffee. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed, ready to connect. Hey, hey, we got an APU going, so all of that's looking good. Okay, things are slowly coming together here. I'm gonna go ahead and clear stuff here, and it's got my doors indicator, but I wanna look and see how much fuel do I have on board. It says 12.8, so all of that is looking good. APU is now available. Important safety tip on these old airbus, or really any airplane. Before you disconnect ground power, make sure that the APU generator light is pushed in. And if you get really close, you can see that they've actually modeled the, the buttons being pushed in and out. Really cool, but you don't have to zoom all the way in. If the light's out, so the APU generator is good. Release parking brake. Okay, so we don't have to release it. We're not ready to go yet, but let's go ahead and we're gonna turn off external power. External power is off. Let's go back over here and in return and we're gonna pull the external power. 
I think it's also time to uh, pull the uh, air stairs. So we're gonna close the doors. And so the air stairs are gonna go away too. Only thing in place now is our chocks. Now let's look down at the FMS and see what's going on. Ah, it says nav accuracy upgraded. We'll clear that. GPS primary is set. That's good news too. That means that uh, all of the alignment is done. So now we can come up and do a couple of buttons here. If you've checked some flows about how to start these airplanes and you're kind of frustrated because you hit the pitch trim switches and they turned off, it's because you have to wait until your IRSs are aligned before you turn on pitch trim, yaw dampers, and ATS auto throttle systems. So you can turn those three on and now all of a sudden you're gonna see that you've got numbers here in the uh, flight control unit. But we're gonna go over here and we're gonna go back over to uh, the electronic flight bag and we're gonna go to the load sheet again. Remember that number again, 26.8, and what we're gonna do is send it to perf. Okay, so this opens up a whole new window and this is actually your take, uh, departure takeoff data. So we are at KMEM Memphis. Hit enter, get your runway for departure, three, six, center, and uh, eight is request. This is gonna go plug in the weather. Notice how if you did all this right, this will automatically put your takeoff weight in for you, which is really pretty cool. And there's everything. Uh, runway's gonna be dry, anti-ice is off. Configuration, flaps and slats are gonna be at 15. Air conditioning, packs are gonna be on and we want our th thrust to be a flex. So let's go and compute, and it is computing. And it sits there and computes, and now all of a sudden, we've got V speeds at a flex temperature and a trim center. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and hit send data to the FMS. I'm not gonna get rid of this though yet. I'm gonna leave that there because I wanna remember that 151 for a second. But let's go down to the FMS. Ooh, receive takeoff company data. Cool, let's clear that. And now we're going to the init page. This is the play page that we started at, but you see the little arrow over here on the right? That means that there is a second page. So hit next page. Remember that center of gravity I told you about that I wrote down, 26.8? Okay, so let's look back over here. Is there a 26.8 here? I don't see one, so this is why I wrote that down because now you need to put the 26.8 that center of gravity that you got on the front page, you gotta put that in there and do that before you start your engines. Otherwise, the uh, FMC will be cranky with you and you have to turn off your engines to put that number in. So, you know, what's our fuel? Read it, uh, not off the flight plan. We already know we need 12.8 tons of fuel, uh, but uh, let's just go ahead and see. Does it say 12.8? It does. So I'm gonna go one, two, point eight block fuel zero fuel weight now this i'll take off the flight plan i don't think we got a zfw over here do we i don't have that there but we did put it in the main page and we took it right off the flight plan so i'm going to go one two three point zero one two three point zero so that will be our zero fuel weight that's automatically uh calculated takeoff gross weight again all of these numbers look good so now let's go to take off and approach page and there's all of our information that we're going to need for uh, take off and approach. So that's good. Now let's do some FMSing. Uh, first of all, go to your charts, take a look at that. And we're going to go and do a fairly long taxi back to 36 center. 36 center is 360. That is our uh, departure heading. So do 360. If we were talking to VATSIM right now, they might give us a, a initial cleared altitude. So uh, an initial cleared altitude would be, you know, climb and maintain five, flight level uh, 5,000, expect flight level 330, 10 minutes after departure. So if you've gotten a, if you know that you're cleared to 5,000 feet, you're gonna put 5,000 feet in there. We're not on VATSIM right now, so I'm just gonna clear us. I'm gonna use my power as the pilot here. Uh, and not be on VATSIM, and I'm gonna clear us to flight level 330. Push the center of the button, that puts it into thousands, and dial up 330. There we go. Now, look back down here. Remember our V2 number is 151? I'm gonna come over here to the flight control unit, 
And so I'll dial in the 151 right now. But because I'm new, I'm not 100% sure what to do, I always add 20 to that. So there is 161 and 171. This ensures that the computer is speeding me up above stall speeds and stuff like that. I don't know if that's the right way to do it. It's what works for me. So we got speed, altitude, heading, that's good. Remember our um, uh, altimeter setting? Altimeter is 3033. So we can come over here and dial in 3033. And again, if you've set up your settings correctly, all of your altimeters are set. Real pilots, of course, they're all different. We're sim pilots, there isn't somebody to set the first officers. So you know what, that's just gonna be the way that is. We have the airplane is on the APU. I think we're gonna start rolling the airplane around a little bit, so let's go ahead and turn on the beacon. That lets people know this airplane's gonna start doing that rolling around thing. And we're done with this page, so I'm gonna go to EFB, and I'm gonna go to checklists. And here is a checklist. Cockpit prep is pretty much done. Signs, okay, we don't have passenger signs on this one. We're a cargo plane. Fuel quantity, we verified that. Navigation is checked and set. Landing, oop, we didn't do the landing elevation. Landing elevation's over here. It's kind of hidden. And so go over to your charts. Go down to AGC for Atlanta. And look in the lower left corner in the uh, uh, Navigraph. Uh, Jepson, uh, upper right corner, 1026. So let's go and dial this up. There is 1000, 1026. That's about as close as we're gonna get for our landing elevation. Okay, so that's good. There is landing elevation. Altimeters, we set those. Break anti skit, we did that. Windows and doors are closed. The beacon is on, the parking brake is on. So now let's go final stop on ground ops, ground services. I'm going to do one more visual check. Parking brakes are on. I'm going to pull my chocks. Some airplanes will let um, uh, better pushback pull your chocks. This airplane doesn't. I'm going to just look at exits. All of our doors are up here to be closed. I don't think you have to worry about doors with this one. If we were in passenger configuration and stuff like that, we would have to worry about that. Uh, some doors and also arming and disarming doors. Those are the slides. Yes, in this airplane, if you don't arm and disarm the, pa disarm the passenger slides, you'll blow the, the, the escape slide. So, you know, you need to do that. And guess what? I think we're ready to go. If we were on VATSIM, we would be contacting ground, doing our pushback stuff. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and let's, uh, we're not, but I'm gonna squawk mode Charlie on the taxiway. We'll call it 122.800. That's where we would be announcing our intentions on VATSIM. Oh, and by the way, if you're on VATSIM, to talk on the radio on this airplane, you can't just tune it in. First thing you gotta do is come down here. You see the control panel here? See where it says VHF1? Push that button. That's your microphone. That's so that you can talk. Right below it, there is a knob. Okay, this little knob right here, but what we're going to do is we're going to kind of come down and look at it like this. See how all the knobs here are at the same level? Put your pointer in there and push the center of it. See how it's up? Now we can actually hear the radio too. So you, if you want to hear the radio, so here ATC, you've got to push, push, pull it up and turn it up. I don't think that the volume control actually works on that. I'm not sure. So turn it up like that, and then also push the button if you want to talk on the radio. Okay, uh, we're ready. Doors are closed, right? We can look over here and see. Yep, all of our doors are closed. Parking brakes on, I think we're ready to go. So look down here, parking brakes off. Better pushback. Push and you may start on just Hey, better pushback's ready to go. So are we going? Airplanes pushing. This airplane is so well modeled. Look at those big engines. Now, actually, I think we would be standing a little higher. 
So maybe that would be uh, standing height. Right about there. Maybe that's it. Look at that. These were big air. These are big airplanes. They carry an awful lot of people and an awful lot of cargo. Okay, we are also cleared for start. So we can go ahead and start doing that. We do have the APU up on. Let's turn on the bleed. So the bleeds are good. Up, oh, we got fuel tanks. Okay, there's fuel tanks. Let's go ahead and this is the engine start system. This is the little knob that's uh, down by the throttles on the uh, Air Airbus A320s. So let's go to system A for start. There is system A. These two little uh, switches go white. They're armed. Push it. It's now open. If you look down here, now this engine the N2 is starting to go up. 13, 14, 15, 16, at 20%, and it slows down as you get closer to 20%. You uh, turn on fuel. 19 and, and, and 20, there you go. Look down here, engine number two, fuel. Operation complete, set parking brake. Parking brake is set. Disconnecting tow, stand by. Okay, as the engine starts, one of the things is that Airbus has done is if the light is out, it's good. Notice here the uh, main cargo, main deck cargo smoke detectors. I didn't turn on my smoke detectors. So if you've got lights that are on, chances are you have forgotten to do something. And that means there's some new buttons up here. There's some oxygen buttons here that we probably should turn on too. My cockpit door is always left unlocked. Uh, we don't have to worry about security and flight sim, and maybe if there's flight attendants aboard, my hope is eternal that they will bring me free pizza and beer. They never do, but hope is eternal. Hey, we got a good start on this engine. One of the ways we know that is the starter light is now gone to arm. Then has been removed. Hand signal on the left. We'll see you next time and have a safe flight. All right, thanks for the pushback. We'll look for a salute and, uh, pit and gear pins. Okay, so up here, Everything's looking good. Let's start the other engine. It's open. And the N2 is going up. Notice there's our pushback driver going around there. And they're going to stop. They're going to stand up. They're holding up a gear pin and a thumbs up. So we can steer the airplane. This is what uh, some airlines call, call the salute and release from guidance. You want to see that gear pin so that you can know you can steer the airplane but the release from guidance, we're at 20%, let's do fuel, it's just spitting there. Release from guidance means that there is nobody underneath the airplane. You can start the airplane, you can roll it around. Uh, and pilots that talk about that say, do not even think of releasing your parking brakes until you get those two signs from uh, your pushback driver, because if you don't, that's a problem. And let's take a look at the clock. It is 1542 Zulu. So a little bit of a late start going out. I'm, I'm, I'm about half an hour late, but we, we're, we're doing a tutorial here. The reason that I mentioned 1542 Zulu and the start time, if you're gonna be in some big VATSIM events, you really, 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 really need to depart on time. If you don't, that becomes a problem. And everything's looking good here. I think we got a good start on both engines. Make sure that the two generator, engine, engine generator lights are out before you go and start turning uh, turning off the APU. First, we're gonna go and do ignition off. We're gonna turn off the APU bleed. We're gonna turn off the master switch. And since we've gotten salute and release from guidance, that means nobody's under the airplane. We're gonna start turning on the pitot two Peters because I hear they're really hot and you can burn, somebody can get their hands burned on them or something. Okay, things are looking good. I'm gonna switch my uh, map page back to map. I'm going to widen this out just a little bit. I'm going to make sure constraints are on. Looking down here, my flex temperature is going to be 54 degrees for takeoff. Come over here and on this little guy here, you want to hit flex. Oh, I already forgot what it was. 54 and dial it up to 54 degrees. 54. There is some sort of an auto thing. I screw up the auto uh, uh, thing here all the time. 
So I'm not going to touch that button because it causes me trouble. Next thing I'm going to do is trims 1.2 up. So there's our trim setting up 1.2. That looks like 1.2. And then the last thing, slats and flaps. Two clicks. And I've got that set up over on my controls. So there goes the slats and flaps. I think it's time to taxi. So we know we're clear to taxi. Nose light is gonna go to taxi mode. We're gonna look down there. My feet are on the tow brakes, looking left. I look physically, <laughs> look there, look right. I think we can go. It's taxi time. Always nice to have your uh, taxi chart out here. We're here in the Southwest area. We're gonna look for Yankee. This airplane does a really, really good job of uh, taxiing at, um, of uh, doing a taxi at um, uh, idle taxi. And one of the things is, is unless you're in somebody's way, I suggest doing idle taxi. These airplanes weren't meant to taxi at Warp Factor 10. So if you can at all, uh, you know, just let it idle taxi. If you have to go up a hill or down a hill, you're gonna need a little bit of power. But if we're gonna taxi along around 10 to 15 knots, you're in good shape. I've got my ground speed, and how, to, how fast do you know you're going? Look at the ground speed. That tells us what, your, what our ground speed is. Okay, here we are, we're gonna slowly turn around here. Okay, let me stop right here. There's a special little sign here. See where it says six whiskey? This might, this is a special spot on the map. There are some spots on the maps that you'll see and they might tell you, ground control might tell you to taxi and hold at six whiskey or continue taxi and hold at seven echo, seven east. So those are special little uh, traffic management stop points that they might tell you to go. So if you're looking at your chart, that's gonna be, um, that, that might be a hold point. Now, technically, we're not talking, in the real world, we're not talking to ground control. We're talking to ramp control. Ground control is gonna be starting out of this ramp area. So that's what that six whiskey might tell, be telling us to do. We're going to Yankee here. There is a runway that we're going to be crossing. So uh, at some point in time, when we do switch over to ground control, they're gonna tell us uh, maybe to hold short of runway nine. So that's what we would do. Looking over here at the um, taxiway signs. Oh, look at that, Yankee. This is what we want. And if we look down here as it goes by, I'll bet it says seven echo right there. Seven Echo, that's another hold short point. So waiting, uh, hope we've gotten our clearance to cross. So there we go. Now at this point, after my long little lecture about uh, idle taxi, we've got a long way to go here. So we're going to the opposite end of the airport. It's clear all the way we can see that. So I might add just a little bit of power, just a little bit and maybe go up to what I like to call the V1 taxi. If you're all alone, you know, pick it up. But be looking ahead and realize what it is that you gotta do. So Yankee, we're gonna go over a bridge, we're gonna keep going, we're gonna keep going, we're gonna keep going, and a bunch of hold points. So, you know, be ready if you have to, to make, to, to, to stop. Here's this bridge area here, so I guess that this would be a place where cars are gonna be driving underneath the airplane. Go ahead and get, a, get myself centered up on the taxi line. That's one of my things that I, better, I need to be a little more attentive of, is getting my airplane in the center of the taxi line. You see, I'm still even off a little bit.
Okay, so now it's kind of right in the middle of my maps. Of my uh, display, map displays. How's that look? Ooh, much better. So if I would do that, I think that's a little better. Okay, we're going to make a little bit of a turn here. Up oh, there's another one of those hold short points. So they may have told us to uh, hold short at 3 Yankee if there's some traffic. That sim doesn't do an awful lot of those things these days, but they're starting to, especially at bigger airports like the one we're going to, Atlanta. You know, they uh, oftentimes Atlanta uh, will tell you push and start is at your discretion, you know, and, and, and you know, call us at, at, uh, at the end of the ramp or something. So that's one of those things. Okay, there's gonna be, I believe that is gonna be Sierra 2. And we might even see some signs over here. Signs are sometimes hard to see. But we're doing just fine going down. I think that's Sierra 1, actually. So we've actually made pretty good progress here. Okay, now I'm going to pull my throttles back and start letting this thing coast down a little bit. We got a good long straightaway. After start checks, pitch trim, we set that rudder trim. That means you go down here, rudder trim, and hit the reset button. Look up here, make sure we're in the center of the taxiway. Spoilers are not armed. Spoilers are now armed. Slats and fat flaps, we know there are 15-15. Ecam status. Okay, well, the Ecam status is looking pretty clean, but we'll look down here. Let's hit the takeoff config button. And if you look up there, it should be green. That's your takeoff test. Uh, Anti-ice, don't think we need that right now. The hand signal was received. Before takeoff checks, have we done our uh, control checks? Looking down, yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Okay, control checks are looking good. Briefing. Yeah, sort of totally. Slats and flaps are concern, conf, uh, confirmed. There's takeoff config. Transponder is on. Cabin secured. TCAS, TARA, PAX, ignition, anti ice. Those are all set too. If it were icing out, if it were a nasty day in the neighborhood, then we would uh, definitely be going and turning on anti ice before departure. Yeah, it's a nice day. Let's not worry about that right now. We start to fly into clouds, though. Then uh, ice is uh, is a thing in flights. Okay, there's going to be a little bit of a turn here to the left. So we're coming to the end of this monster long taxi. And we're essentially ready to go. Uh, we, are, we would almost be set for imme uh, immediate takeoff. Some turns here. We're going 26 knots. Basically, big jets really like to make a 90 degree turn on a taxiway right around 10 knots. We'll go all the way to the holding point, Romeo. So this is a big staging area here. So there's like three lines that you could get on. There's the middle. So this would be our hold short. This, th this way they can go and shuffle airplanes around depending upon where they're going and when they actually need to be in the sky. Now we would probably get a hold short from uh, ATC at 36 right. We're taking off 36 center. So let's assume we got our clearance to cross. Checklist is good, we're ready to go. So we'll just continue on across. We might get a little hold short point up here. Adding a little bit of power, oomph to get us going. It's a big heavy jet. So we've crossed all of that. And we are uh, clear for takeoff. So when I get it cleared for takeoff from uh, the tower, or clear to all line up and wait. This is my cue to turn my strobes on. You can use the auto system. 
I just, I, this is when I turn it on. Hey, I'm an active airplane on the runway. I'm about ready to go and do that flying thing. So this is what I call being the attention freak. I'm also gonna go and do one click on the landing lights. This is one of those airplanes where the landing lights drop down underneath the uh, wing a bit. So I'm dropping them down. If we're cleared for immediate takeoff, once you're lined up, then you turn them on. That lets everybody know this airplane is really serious about flying. Throttles going up. And stabilized, I'm gonna move it till it gets to about 40, and then I'm gonna hit my auto thrust button. So you see, auto thrust is now popped in. Airplane is now taking care of thrust. I've got my feet on the rudder pedals, hand on the stick, and I'm keeping it centered up. I notice that my airspeed tape is alive, but I'm still concentrating mostly on outside the airplane. The sound, the takeoff sounds on this airplane are awesome. A little bit of a wind here. I need a little left rudder, 100 knots. There's 120. You can see V1 and rotator starting to show up on the tape. One of the things that I would really like developers to do, V1, rotate, is to include callouts, V1 and rotate would be really nice. Positive rate of climb, gear going up. There goes our gear. Okay, let's look down here. How we doing? There's our intercept point. So we actually do a little bit of a turn out this way to intercept. Okay, we're good. I'm gonna now go over here and I'm gonna hit the climb button. That's climb power. And if we're nicely centered up on our uh, map here, I'm gonna go ahead and just go to AP. These are complex jets. And if you're new to the jet, do not be afraid. When you're 200 feet above the ground, you can hit, hit the AP if you're all set up. And there's our intercept point. Jacks should be next. We're not turning because I fought, forgot to hit the nav button. Uh-oh, now it's trying to hit the intercept point. Uh-oh, bad pilot. Let's do a quick save. Uh, direct jacks, insert. See, it was trying to circle back around and go to the intercept point. Maybe I should have gone to my heading select first. Ah, good safety tip. And we got some nice ortho scenery around Memphis, Tennessee. If you know that you're gonna be flying around an airport around uh, uh, X-Plane, I do recommend going and getting some ortho scenery right now. If you've got any uh, opportunities to do that, it's a little bit, uh, they're very big files, they're a little cumbersome. It's a little bit of a bear to learn. Ah, oh, we're above the F button, sorry. Let's do flaps. Now we're not above the S button, so we're uh, that's basically flaps uh, from two to one now. Okay, that's a little bit better of a takeoff. So really, when I, t when I was on the takeoff roll, I should have gone to heading select first, then gone to nav. I'm a little rusty and need more coffee. So we're direct jacks. Okay, you might wonder why it is that we're not speeding up. Remember how I told the airplane I wanted to go to 171 knots? Well, it's right, it's a little faster than that right now. It's 179, but we haven't done our speed up yet. So you need to remember to do that yourself. So we'll go ahead and speed it up to 240. Now we should speed up a bit. I will also, if I've got anything uh, resembling a 90 degree turn or something like that on a departure. So there's that turn at jacks. I'll kind of keep my speed down a little bit. Our speed is now coming up. We're, there's the little S. Now another thing you could do is if you've gone and downloaded your flight plan, you put it all in correctly, we could have also hit the profile button. There's the little letter S. So flaps are now going up. There's our flap indicator going up. And now that we're done with the 90 degree turns, I'm gonna go ahead and hit profile. 
the airspeed mock indicator goes to managed. And we're gonna go uh, just uh, continue our climb. No real other constraints going out here. So once I'm clear of constraints on a departure, I usually hit the airport button and go to about 30 on the map. Want to start seeing those uh, airports showing up. Those airports showing up, if we have a problem, that's what we point the airplane to if we have to do an immediate landing or something. After takeoff checks, slats and flaps are retracted. Landing gear is up and neutral. And that's something with these old Airbuses. Like a Boeing, you know how Boeing, you uh, turn up, put landing gear up and off. Well, Airbus wants you to go up and neutral. So gear is up, click it, and now landing gear is neutral. After that, packs are on, altimeters are set. We're coming up on 10,000 feet. We're holding 250 knots. At 10,000 feet, nose will drop a little bit and we will uh, accelerate to about 290, 300. And there is 10,000 feet. So we'll come up here, landing lights. The nose light turned itself off when we brought the gear up, but we're gonna turn the switch off too. And you can see our airspeed is slowly climbing. We're still climbing at about 1,000 feet per minute. So our climb continues and it's really pretty good here. As we continue to leave the area, I usually leave my uh, map here at 60 miles. And we continue the climb. How about that scenery out there? That's what ortho will do. If you've got good ortho scenery, you can make X-Plane look almost as good as um, the other big simulator. It just takes more work and in some cases more expense. But I gotta tell you, I really, uh, really do like what you can do with this. And I, you know, this video is being done before X-Plane 12 comes out. I have no idea what their plans are, but it's gotta be something. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do. Okay, our speed's come up pretty good. The only other little cleanup thing you do in the cockpit is I'm gonna go and disarm the speed brakes. So speed brakes are disarmed. Might, we might have been down here on the radio. We might have been down on the radio doing uh, ATC. And this is a relatively short flight. Now, I would usually wait, but we do need to uh, start being ready for our landing in Atlanta. So I'm gonna go to ACARS, ATC and I'm gonna do weather request. If we were going into that sim, I would request their ADAS. Let's create, get the Atlanta METAR, K-A-T-L, Atlanta, send. There's the Atlanta METAR, and print it. And we can see 290 at seven, gusting to 14 is our wind. It's 10 miles visibility, clear skies in Atlanta, seven degrees, the dew points minus seven, altimeter three, double, three, zero, three, three. And I'm gonna tear that up and I'm gonna put that right there. It's all ready to go. One of the secrets to being, uh, uh, doing a VATSIM event with a complex airplane like this is stay about a mile ahead of what you need to do. If you can look at your uh, ex-pilot, and see that your next frequency for Atlanta Center is 133 point whatever. Put that 133 point whatever, 133 point 100. If you know that that's gonna be your next frequency, put that in your recall if you've got a few minutes. That just saves confusion, especially when it's approach to landing time, because at that point in time, you really are going to be busy. And being busy means you just don't have a lot of time. So buy yourself a little bit of uh, time down the road by planning ahead with frequencies and weather. We are coming up on 18,000 feet. You know what happens at 18,000 feet in the United States. We hit the standard button, standard. So we are a transition in the US. And we are good to go there. 
let's look up here and see if I've forgotten anything. Fuel's on, that's good. Window heaters, pitot tubes, all of this is good. Oh, I forgot to arm the doors for departure. I forgot to check my lights there. Doors are armed, emergency exits are good. Everything else is good. Now, if it had been raining or snowing, that is a time when you would, uh, for takeoff, you would turn this over to continuous relight, the engine starters. It's not raining or snowing. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, so we didn't need to do that then. What other trouble can we get into? If you're on VATSIM, go over here to ATC1, where your squat code is, click it. See where it says traffic on? Let's turn on traffic. Now go back to tuning. And if we were on VATSIM and there were other airplanes flying around us, this would be your TCAS on your climb and descent indicator. And this one's set to six miles. So that's how you would go about doing that. And we're doing good. Okay, looking outside the window here, you can see down here, see that line? We've just, we are now exiting that little corner. That is ortho scenery. This is basic scenery. This is what comes with the sim. So this is, this was my Memphis area. And so you can clearly see the difference here. That's, that's a big difference. Don't really, so anyhow, I really like to suggest ortho is nice. Again, I can't wait to see what Laminar does with their scenery coming up. I, I don't think it's going to be downloading scenery uh, like it does over in Microsoft Flight Simulator, but I do think that they're probably going to inc increase the quality of the meshes. Uh, and that's, I, I'm expecting to see scenery looking good. I hear seasons are coming. It's going to be so nice to see snow on the ground. I'm really looking forward to seeing snow on the ground. That's going to be nice. Okay, let's look up here. Anything funky going on? Nope, looking good. So, let's do progress. We are 276 nautical miles out from uh, Atlanta. There is a button here that I obsess about. It's this one over here. It's the fuel prediction button. When we get to final, uh, final cruise, that is a button that we are going to uh, be stressing on. And mostly that's gonna be for long hauls. Now, for long hauls, this is the Airbus A300. You know that Anybuilds also made the Airbus A310. If you put them side by side, the A310 is a little shorter than the A300. So shorter and it's reconfigured. The A310 is the Anybuilds airplane if you wanna do cross the pond with an, old, uh, with an old bus like this. So it's got more range. This, uh, this was the first one, so it doesn't have quite the range for cross the pond. The thing is, is let's say you're gonna do a fairly good size flight here, you know, halfway across the country or from the UK down into the middle of Europe. You're gonna be going a little bit further. The thing is, is you don't wanna refuel. So that fuel prediction button, let's hit it now. It says that when we land in Atlanta, we should have 7.9 tons of fuel in the tanks. Look over at your flight plan. There is a number and it's under fuel. See where it says REMF? That's remaining fuel. What this is, is this has taken your uh, fuel that you're needed to go to your alternate. It's basically taken these three numbers right here. Your alternate fuel, your holding fuel, and your extra fuel added those three together and that's what you should have in the tank there let's test my theory let's see how crazy i am 21.69 2169 plus 1364 i'm going to be really embarrassed if i'm wrong 3755 7288 <gasps> hold boy so that is your fuel to hold extra or get to your alternate. So what they're telling you is when you pull up to the gate, if you didn't have to hold, if you didn't need extra fuel and if you didn't have to go to your alternate, you should have 7.2, 7288 in the tanks. Right now, we've got 
And this is saying we should have 8.0 tons in there. So we should have a little extra. Now, sometimes that number goes down. And if you're on a long haul and you're noticing that number go down, 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 and you're thinking, I may not have enough fuel to get there. That's why on a long haul or a VATSIM event, I will add an extra ton. So if I'm flying on VATSIM now, and let's say there was ATC at Memphis, but not in Atlanta, I would add another ton of fuel. If there was ATC at both Atlanta and Memphis, I would add two tons of fuel. If it was a huge VATSIM event, I would add three to four tons of extra fuel just for what I call VATSIM time because there might be some VATSIM types of holds or things. Generally, I found that this fuel on board thing is getting better and better and better. But you don't want to run, into, run out of fuel. There is one time in 3,000 hours of flying on VATSIM that I've had to uh, do what you might call mid-air refueling and that was on a Kytac heart attack. And I was at a holding point for, I believe, 12 orbits around, an, around a hold. And I didn't plan ahead for a lot of holding going into Kytac. So I had to call, I had to call the refueling tanker. Uh, very embarrassing. You never, never, never want to do that. So anyway. We are getting close to, uh, I believe, our final cruising altitude. So it's flight level 330, so we should get, be getting an uh, uh, altitude alert. Come on, airplane. <gasps> Look at that. We got a little light there, altitude alert, and you can see flight level 330 slowly coming down there. That means we're getting to our final cruise. This is where the rubber meets the road. When you get to cruise, and we hit the cruise button, we let it establish for 10 minutes. Then I'm gonna look down at that estimated uh, fuel on board. And that's when I'm either gonna go, hey, I'm a really great flight planner, or oh my God, we're all gonna die, that sort of thing. Another thing that I like to do is go over and hit the center of heading select. That just puts the heading select on our current heading. If all of a sudden LNAV freaks out, at least, I, at least I've already got heading select set here. And we are at our final cruise, standard altitude. Now we come over here to that little fuel uh, engine control system and I'm gonna hit CR, cruise mode. So now we're in cruise power mode. And then I'm just gonna sit and let it chill for a bit. So we'll chill for a bit. But the real thing that I want to do is I want to look down here and I want to see this number here, EFOB. How's my estimated fuel? And remember, it's just an estimate. But right now it says 7.7. .7. Remember what the magic number is, 7.2. If it goes below 7.2 and we're not holding, diverting, or orbiting or something, then we've got a bit of a problem. While we're doing this, let's go back to uh, page one on progress. We are 224 nautical miles out from our destination. This airplane will give you a top of descent. I usually wait until I see the top of descent hockey stick show up in my, um, show up in my map before I start uh, doing the final preps for landing. So we're going over uh, Alabama. There's Huntsville, there's Tuscaloosa and Birmingham, Alabama. Chattanooga, Tennessee is up there. Hotlanta is down here. There is an estimated top of descent on the map too. This is Sim Toolkit Pro, by the way. Sim Toolkit Pro is free, and it works with uh, it works very well with um, Simbrief. Uh, you can have your whole fleet of airplanes. This operates as a logbook tool. Tool. Uh, I've been using this for quite a while. I've been pretty happy with it. If you are a uh, live streamer and you uh, see some of the data at the top of the uh, screen there. That data comes from Sim Toolkit Pro. Really amazed. This thing has grown up an awful lot. So I definitely uh, put that on the list of things uh, to check out. The airplane itself, pretty nice. It's a two-person cockpit. There is an observer seat right there. There is another observer seat. You can open the door and we can come back here. So you can do a little tour back here. There is a bathroom. 
And if you come back into this area here, you can see this is sort of a little cabin area. And if you look over your shoulder, you can see one, two, three, four jump seats, one, two, two jump seats over there. So you can bring a couple people along uh, because this is a FedEx. If I were to see uh, Tom Hanks sitting in one of these seats and he was holding a Wilson volleyball, I would be a little worried, just saying. And if you don't get the reference, I'm talking about the Tom Hanks movie, Castaway. And then we can keep coming back here and we can look through here and you can see our cargo. If you look there, there's the big door with the FedEx logo. And there's everything back there. They did uh, some uh, more work on this, by the way. So uh, back here, they made this uh, kind of nice. You can see some of the control cables. You could kind of walk through there. You could slide over here and maybe fit back through here. So you could keep walking around, walking around. I'm gonna guess that all of these area markers here are accurate and this is how they would uh, determine what cargo container goes in one place. You can see some of the uh, ventilation here. You can go over the top, take a look at some of the vents. And so this is some of the uh, stuff that they've done with this airplane. And you can just go right through this uh, thing here. I guess if one of the cargo containers gets loose and starts rolling about, you can see uh, this is what's supposed to stop it from crashing into uh, the cockpit. You come over here, you can open the bathroom. Uh, you can go if you need to. Uh, it does not flush like the uh, any builds, like the um, uh, Fly J Sim airplane. There's a little uh, closet here. Uh, I guess this is where you could store some suitcases. There's no galley. Now I've seen uh, some pictures on some cargo airplanes that behind the co-pilot, they've got some galley kites kinds of things in there that you could have. I don't know if that's standard and I don't know what equipment, but apparently you can have a small refrigerator or something like that, I'm not sure. Okay, we're coming up on Ruth. There's Russia. Oh, Russia, Ruth. This is the beginning of the star. This is the beginning. We, we've already started the star. If we take a look over at the chart, I told you this was a fast flight. So look at that. There is Russia. That's it right there. There's Russia and Jackson. There's Glavin. Look up here, this is an interesting thing. This is a little thing called Jackson up here. This is a hold. So ATC could tell you to do a hold at Jackson. This airplane does holds. I'm not gonna make you do a hold this time. We do, uh, we're starting to do more holds on the spy flight these days. Again, this is to get you up and down again. But these airplanes do holds. You would actually put that in. So at Jackson, you would click, I think, Jackson over here. Oh, it says hold. And this is where you would put in a hold. So this is where you would insert it. Look over here real fast. So Jackson. Inbound course is 112. It says the inbound course is 108. It looks like you make a left turn. So you'd have to change these numbers but we're not going to do any of this. So we're just gonna hit return and go back in there. Back to takeoff and approach. There's Jackson there. Oh, look at this. We got a top and descent hockey stick. And I've actually got my map on 40. I usually leave it a little bit bigger. So we gotta get busy on our approach. Go over to your charts on both Jepson and Lido style charts on your approach runway, look at the bottom. We're doing a category one approach, 1,190. 1,190, that's our decision, 1,190. Most Airbuses, you're gonna put that in a box labeled MDA. Everything else here is pretty good. VAP is 136, that's our approach speed. So that's good to go there. 
Another thing, you have to manually put the ILS into this airplane. On a Lido style chart, it's 110.1. So 110.1. There you go. And the inbound course for this flight is going to be 275. So dial it back to 275. 275. There we go. 275. Okay, that's good. Our initial approach. At this point in time, we might be getting something from our friends at air traffic control that would say, descend at pilot's discretion on the Glavin 1 arrival. Uh, runway 26 right transition. So let's look and see what we have for altitudes. There's Russia. It says no lower than 9,000. There's Glavin. C, there's that. There's cloud. It says 5,000. Uh, landing runway expect vectors after Kevy. I don't really see a bunch of altitudes on this thing here. There's some altitudes over here. So 8,000. This is for the e east, east side approaches. So I see 8,000 at Navy, at Slytherin. I don't see anything there. I think it's Southern, not Slytherin. So I don't see those same kinds of numbers over here. So if I don't see anything, and I may very well be missing it. Remember, I have not had coffee. The next thing I'm going to do is look over here. What's my final plunge number? This is what I call it. I call it the final plunge. And this is the last altitude we're going to be before we snag the glide slope. 5,000 feet. So I'm going to make it 5,000 feet. Let's go over here. Hit 5,000 feet. Okay, now, oh, uh, Airbus A319-2021, you can go and put your altitude in. You got your flight management computer all set. That's all great and wonderful. But you know what? Airbus, in, the, in those Airbuses, they want the pilot to push a button. This airplane, you can arm the approach. So let's go back over here. You see my pointer? It looks like a standard pointer there, right? Watch as I move it closer to the lower left-hand side of the altitude select button. It's an arrow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click. One click. Now, look over here at the primary flight display. You see up here where it says P altitude and P speed. I'm going to guess that's programmed altitude, program speed. Now, we've got in blue, which indicates that it's armed, P descent. So, we have armed the descent. And just in time, look at that, we're 20 miles away from the uh, top of descent indicator. Captain Mike Ray, who writes a series of books called the Flight Simulator Checkout uh, Guides, uh, did a series of books on Airbus. Captain, Captain Ray was a, is a retired United Airlines pilot. He wrote some really great books. Uh, I have two of them, one for the 757 and one for the Airbus A319. Captain Ray was a Boeing captain but did uh, the Airbus Series 2 and did a b wonderful job. I do suggest them. Um, and it was Captain Ray that I first learned, uh, and I don't know if that's the official term or not, but that's what Captain Ray calls the top of descent hockey stick. And so uh, I picked up on that and call them the hockey sticks. As we get in a little bit closer, I might dial my map range in, and you can see that top of descent hockey sticks coming in a little closer. Since we're also getting ready to descend and we know that we're in the star, I'm gonna go from airport mode to constraint mode because I wanna be able to see the constraints on my map too. You can see over here this little green, uh, blue, blue line. Let's go and uh, go up here and just click the center of the heading select. It changed. Now see how it's straight up? That's, uh, that's, uh, that's our current heading. So again, if, if LNAV freaks out, we know exactly what to push, and, it, and it's already set up, so we push heading select, we just keep on flying smoothly. Resetting the heading select in the uh, flight control unit is kind of a standard thing I'm picking up for uh, real world pilots. You're always kind of updating that little thing. 10 miles away, at a certain point in time as we get closer to our top of descent, you're gonna notice a little graph that shows up here the, on the right side of this. That's called the vertical deviation indicator. And it, no, it doesn't mean that my sense of humor is going to become deviant. 
although some have accused me of doing that. But no, it means vertical deviation, and that is our deviation above or below the descent path that we should be on. And so we, we're gonna see that pop in there at any second. Because we're in profile and everything else. Oh, there it is. We are now deviant. Okay, that was probably not a good thing to say. The word police are gonna come, be, gonna be knocking on the door. All right, vertical devi, devi, <laughs> vertical deviation is there. And uh, in just a second, you're gonna see uh, our speed's gonna start to slow down a little bit. And you're gonna start to see the, uh, look at that, there goes the climb and descend. And we have started our descent. Now, as long as this thing stays, you know, within a couple of little spots here, we should be fine. But one of the things is you might see a message pop up and it's gonna ask you to throw out your speed brakes. At the beginning of a top of a descent, I usually tend to ignore th that message. But if it persists, then I might start to throw out speed brakes a little bit. So right now it's saying, oh, you are a little bit high here, but notice now how it's coming back. So that's, uh, you know, when it first tells you, and that it does it the same way on the Boeing 757 too. So, you know, on an initial, when the descent initially begins, at that point in time, I'm gonna kind of say, well, let's just wait and see. Okay, now all of a sudden you may take a look at, I uh, increased the map size, and all of a sudden there's a bunch of little lines that have shown up. It might, what you're seeing there is, I believe, our missed approach. And if you go and you take a look at the flight plan, as we should have, we are now going direct to Maddox. So after Maddox, Glavin, Slytherin, Hog, and Rain. So come over here, look at the star. So Jackson, Maddox, Glavin, Slytherin, Hog, and Rain. So really, all of those extra lines there, basically that you saw, this is nothing more than our missed approach. The blue line there, that is what takes us out to our uh, alternate airport. But don't freak out about all those things. If your map shows up dirty like that for a second, just go and check your checkpoints. And if your checkpoints match, you're in good shape. I'm gonna go back to take off and approach. Let's go down here. I'm gonna do ACARS ATC. I'm gonna do weather. I'm gonna do METAR, KA, TL, I, if we were in VATSIM, I would be doing the uh, ATIS. Okay, this one is 14, 15, 52. This one's 15, 52. There's no update on the uh, ATIS or the METAR. I will look at those as we're coming on in. Just an important little safety tip uh, for, for doing that. Ah, now all of a sudden, see, more drag. So let's throw out a little speed break. It says we're a little bit too high. I've got the uh, uh, Thrustmaster uh, TCA uh, captain set, so stick throttle, and I'm, uh, I'm actually using that, and I found it works great with this airplane. I really do like it. Now that it says more drag, let's clear the more drag out of that. And you can see, yeah, we're a little bit high, so it wants to descend faster. The real world pilots have a suggestion for you. And if you've got a controller in your, in your home cockpit where you, a specific lever is set up for your uh, speed brakes, the real world pilots say that in a situation like this, if at all possible, keep your hand on the speed brake knob because you're going to forget sometimes that the speed brakes are out on approach and that messes a lot of stuff up. So the real world pilots will leave their hand on the speed brake knob until they can put him down, put, put the boards on down. And you can see, oh, yeah, I got my speed brakes out. So that's kind of what uh, the pilots suggest. And uh oh, you can see vertical deviation is now coming back up there. So as we, as we start to center up, I'm gonna go ahead and it's gonna reduce our rate of descent. 
I'm gonna let it go for about 10, 15 seconds. And then I'll put my speed brakes down. And then I'll take my hands off the control, off the speed brake control. I have actually done that. I've forgotten my speed brakes were out. I'm setting up for final. The numbers aren't looking right and the airplane's behaving bratty. And then I looked at, oh, your speed brakes are out. That is a problem. There's another one of the, uh, what I, I call them the ortho tan lines. It's just right there. So we're now entering, uh, leaving and entering an ortho zone. My ortho's a little on the patchy side in this part of the world. Okay, we're coming in a little closer to the runway. I wouldn't, at this point, I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to uh, bring my map in a bit. I'm also going to re-verify at this point in time, at this point in time, ATC should be, be saying, yes, you are going to be landing on runway 26 right. So I'm going to re-verify ILS 110.1 inbound course 275. There are several ways to do it depending upon the airplane, but now is a great time just to re-verify that, especially if you're in a big VATSIM event. If you're in a big VATSIM event, that's gonna cause you a little bit of grief. Okay, we are coming up on Southern. Uh-oh, it wants more drag again. Wants more drag. So again, I've just thrown out my speed brakes. Hands are on the controls. And that's a, that seems to be a normal thing here. You're gonna have to do that with this airplane on the descent. Passing 20,000 feet. Yeah, there's a chance we might be a tad bit high here. And you can see the orange message and it said more drag. I'm gonna clear that, go back to a view, put my hand back on my speed brake control. It's inconvenient, but it's better than, it's better than coming in and having a, being on final and seeing your speed brakes are still out. Okay, now all of a sudden vertical deviation is now centered up again, the little uh, uh, pink diamond. I'm gonna go ahead and throw down the speed brakes. Let's go ahead and start getting the airplane ready. Uh, this is not the longest of runways or shortest of runways, but we do want to make the high speed. Atlanta's busy. So we're going to go over here and we're going to do auto brakes. Just like the other Airbuses, you could do lower, medium. I'm going to do medium. Let's also reach down here. I'm going to go ahead and arm speed brakes. You may have to do it a second time if you need more speed brakes on your descent. Up 17,000 feet. Transition in the United States, 18, so we missed it a bit. No huge big deal, 30.33. So dial this up, 30.33. Altimeters are set. And it wants more speed brake. Wants more speed brake coming on in. You just know there's a bunch of mosquitoes down there saying, come on down, we're waiting for you. And right there, I believe, is Hartsfield Airport. There's our airport, how about that? I will tell you that it's really spectacular at night. It looks really good at night. Uh, we are going into a payware airport for Atlanta. I think it's a really nice one. Take a look over here. Ah, we're uh, still going down kind of fast. Probably ATC by now would have told us you're going too fast. We'd like you to be at about 210. So let's dial our speed back to 210. Expect ATC to uh, do those sorts of things. I'm gonna throw a little more speed brake out to get down there to 210. Hands on the controls. There's 260. We were a little bit high on this descent. We were a little high on this descent. Just kind of the way it goes. And the message has popped out. Yes, 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 more drag. I'm gonna make a mental note, VAP now, 136. I usually add about at least four or five to that, round it up to like 140. 
Okay, we're below 150. Here comes our green dot. So we can start to think about throwing out some slats and flaps. In fact, as we're coming closer to that, I'm gonna do the slats, put speed brakes away, good speed there, and that's good. Look out there, we should be There's Hartsfield. Hello, Hartsfield. There is uh, FedEx land over on the north side of the airport. There is the uh, Delta Museum on the northwest side of the airport. There's more cargo on the south side. Okay, let's go ahead and do another speed reduction here. I'm gonna go to 180 now. We'll also do another notch of flaps. I think I'm kind of done playing with these speed brakes. I'm going to go ahead and arm those for arrival. Those are good. Yo, yes, the trim controls should be definitely up there. It slowed our descent just a little bit. That's okay. We'll, we'll make it up. Ooh, remember that little blue indicator there? There is our current heading. I'm going to go ahead and reset that. A good thing to do, especially when you are on a uh, one of those approaches, a star that vectors you to your final approach course as opposed to some stars are actually connected to your ILS approach. So I definitely will suggest doing that. You see a little banana out here. That's when we're going to be getting to 5,000 feet. So even though we were a little bit high, no, not that kind of high. Even though we're a little high, you can see we're going to make 5,000 feet just fine. Coming up on 10,000 feet though, and that's gonna be landing lights. We'll also come over here and passenger signs, work cargo, we don't care about those things. Briefing, yeah, we've done that ad nauseum today. ECAM status has been checked. Altimeters are good, minimums, we have set our minimums. Ignition, if it's raining outside or something like that, you're gonna to go to continuous relight. Landing elevation, we know we've set that, so we can say, Approach checklist is done. We also have speed brakes set, auto brakes are set. All is looking good. Now that we're getting this tied in here, I'm gonna go ahead and let's do one more click on the map. There is Haynes right there, there's Kevy. There's 11,000 feet, so we're gonna go out a little bit beyond, but that's okay. ATC will probably do that. Our vertical deviation's a little bit shot at the moment. I'm not gonna freak out about that either. Once again, remember this. If you have control of your speed like I have right now, I'm gonna go and hit final approach. So those are our speeds. This is gonna set our bugs. VAP 136, I'm gonna make it 140. One of the reasons that I do ra uh, round it up to like a 140 is I'm gonna be able to see that small little number there, even on this view, and that way I know that my speed is on. There's 10,000 feet. Let's go and pre-arm. We're gonna turn the, the nose light to taxi. Landing gear comes down, taxi light will go on. Let's go ahead and just turn on the landing lights. Two clicks on this airplane. If it's dark and you're coming into a dark airport, one of the things you might consider doing is turning on runway turnoff lights now. And also maybe the wing lights to light yourself up. It's a dark airport, that kind of makes it a little bit better. Okay, how are we doing here? We have got, there's Kimmy, there's Kevy. It looks like we're gonna be about 5,000 feet in 10 miles. Okay, we are now direct Kevy. After Kevy, there's really nothing else. The airplane will automatically continue flying on your own heading. But if you are a control freak, at this point in time, hit that center button again and go heading select. So now we're controlling the heading here. Let's also go ahead and turn on the LS system. There is ILS. And look at that, we've already got a uh, localizer. There's 8,000 feet. We don't have to be right at our, at, our, uh, at our final plunge altitude to make the turn. And in fact, as you look over here, there is the uh, beginning of the approach. 
A little bit after Kevy, we can start our turn and we'll be just fine. Oh, another one of those big bad uh, tan lines. Okay, we've got about five miles to the point that we reach our uh, our uh, descent, our 5,000. How about let's go ahead and do 90 degrees to the right. So come on over here and 180. A nice, uh, very easy to do your base. So there's a nice base turn. By this time, Atlanta ATC is very probably giving us a little bit of, 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 of a heading that's going to take us right to uh, Haynes. We'll just do that turn. And we'll look around there and we'll see if we see Haynes show up as we make our turn. And look at that. There's Haynes. How about that? Almost like we know what we're doing. There's 180 degrees. Coming up on 5,000 feet, 180 knots. This is almost perfect. And 5,000. At this point, ATC is gonna say cleared uh, for uh, the ILS, maintain 5,000 feet until established on the localizer. So we're gonna hold on to 5,000 feet and now we're basically going direct to Haines. I've got two half stars here on the uh, glide slope and localizer. That means we're receiving both. Now is a good time to come up here and I'm gonna hit the land button. And this is going to take care of, this is gonna take care of getting us on the uh, localizer and snagging the glide slope. And in fact, if you look up here, localizer is blue, glide slope is blue. Those are both armed. We're also set up for a category two approach. I do not believe that this airplane is category three capable. I've never seen category three ever show up there. Maybe it is and I just, I, and I need to read the manual. Look at that, here comes our localizer. Airplanes turning us over. I really do suggest with these complex airplanes as you are learning to fly them. Yes, we all want to take it off the autopilot. Use the auto flight systems. They are so helpful. At this point in time, ATC is going to say maintain 180 knots until AJ. That's usually about five miles to the end of the runway. So uh, we're going to have to keep our present speed 180 for another 10 miles. And then you look down here, remember that VAP 136? I'm going to go and kick it to 140. It's just easier to remember. Another number that you could have put in here if you wanted for a category one approach, it says 200 feet above the ground. That's 1,190. There is another number that you could put in here. It seems redundant to me, but you could hit decision height and dial this up to 200. I don't know if I'm doing this right or not, but you could also do that as well. So 10 miles to AJ, that is when ATC would say, okay, you can start your slowdown then. I've still got my gear up. I have everything really except gear and speed. So auto brakes are set. Speed brakes are armed. It, if I happen to look up and see if I'm on VATSIM at X pilot and see that there is ground and we're by now talking to tower, if I know that ground is 121, Point nine, and I can see that, now is a great time to put that in your recall. This is a great time, okay? We're just sort of sitting here waiting to get to AJ. We're established on the localizer, glide slope's coming up, but we have an extra second. That's the time to put, on, put, to put it on ground. Because essentially, here we are coming out on the approach. As soon as we get over here at Alpha 4, we need to be talking to ground. It's so much easier to hit that button. And that really does, that actually, at least for me, really does reduce your workload and your stress level. And this is a high time of stress on a VATSIM event. Okay, look at that, we've got glide slope and you can see localizer's green, glide slope has a star, 
once we're nicely established on that glide slope, the star's going to be away and everything will be nice. We are now five miles from AJ, 10 miles from the runway. Everything else on the airplane's good. Comms are set. We don't need to do anything down there. Landing checklist, we'll do that after we drop gear and start get, start rolling the speed back. Now five miles, there's AJ. So when, when we hit AJ there, that's when we can go and reduce our speed to landing speed. If you fly with me an awful lot on the spy flight, you probably notice that on almost every approach that I ever do, uh, I wait until five miles until I do my landing speed and tell my gear. That's because most of the big airports, they're gonna, they're gonna do that. You can do gear now, but, you know, maybe I'm just living dangerously as far as the gear is concerned. We are on glide slope, we're on localizer. We're about three miles from AJ. Last chance for a sip of coffee. Here's another thing, as you fly, flight simulators and autopilot, you might get all scrunched up in your chair. Now's a good time to make sure that you're sitting correctly. I would also gently put your feet on your rudder pedals if you have them, because we're gonna be disconnecting the autopilot soon and you're gonna need to do rudder pedaling. And we are coming up on about two miles to AJ. One last check up there. No lights are blinking at us. Nothing looks bad. Almost to AJ. In fact, that's close enough. Remember what I wanted for my speed, 140? So I'm gonna go put 140 in the indicate in the uh, auto speed buck, uh, auto speed window. And now we're gonna go ahead and do landing gear. Gear's going down. Look over here, are we getting close to another flap setting? We are, let's drop flaps another one. Speed continues to come down. I'll usually wait for flaps, full flaps until we get close to that speed. And there's flaps. And we are all set. About now, unless we are going to get a late landing clearance or something like that, uh, we would probably be cleared to land. Runway 26 right. Again, if you're in a big VAT sim event, you're gonna probably want to start anticipating now. What are you gonna do after you land? Well, we got a high speed to the right and to the left. We are going to be wanting to go to the right side though because our cargo area is on the north side of the airport. So we're gonna be going for the Alpha 4 taxiway. I've still got autopilot doing the work for me right now. Going over the interstate. But I've still, uh, I've still got the autopilot working for me. This is category two capable. Let's let the airplane do a little bit of work, especially if you're new, especially if uh, you're in a big event. Okay, now I'm gonna start making sure I'm set in my seat. Hands now on the uh, side stick. Other hand is going over on the throttles. Autopilot is off, Cap's got the airplane. Hit the autopilot button a second time to, to uh, settle the alarm. You may have to push the nose up or down. This airplane does not trim like an Airbus A319 2021. A little high now. Oh, look at that windsock. It's a windy day in the neighborhood. Float, float, float. Reversers. Green. Decel. There's our high speed. Well, not really high speed. 
Let's throw the reversers, tap the brakes, manual braking, and we are off at Alpha 4. Off the runway, landing lights. Strobe lights, continuing the turn. We know we're coming around here. There we go. Look down here, hit the recall button. Ground point nine. Oops, you spend too much time down there. Of course, the the the, the four rules are 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 key. Aviate, navigate, communicate. At some point I will put the word inebriate in there or hydrate. Okay, we're uh, off the runway. We should have done flaps. We'll tap the speed brakes, drop those down again. And we'll be uh, cleared to taxi to FedEx Cargo via Alpha and Alpha 11. You can see there's D, uh, DHL, very uh, yellow airplanes there. As we get a little bit closer to uh, the ga uh, our gate or our stand, APU switches on and start. Speed, uh, got my throttles all the way down. At this point, I'm going to turn off decision height, constraints, and the landing system. I think that the real world pilots are not going to turn any of that stuff off until they get to the gate. Some braking here. We got some turns. APU is now up and running. I might also start to turn off my Pito two Peters unless it's driving snow or something like that, but probably we can go and cool those things off. All right. Also, there's going to be some rolly things here. This airport is not that uh, flat. And in some parts of Atlanta Hartsfield, it's not flat at all. Okay, here we are. We're coming up on Alpha 11. At the real world, we would at this point probably be switching a frequency over from ground and we would be talking to uh, ramp control. The static scenery has a couple of deltas down here. I, uh, maybe that's delta cargo. Now I really want my speed to about uh, ground speed 10 knots because we got some turns coming up here. We got two MD-11s right up there. There's 14 knots. Uh-oh, I bet we got hot brakes. Look over there, there's a stand. Let's grab this one. Some places are gonna have, um, some places will have uh, Gate guidance going in. I'll turn on the brake fans. And a nice little turn. Okay, so I mentioned gate guidance. We're all lined up on the little yellow line. We're kind of inching forward, add a little power. How do you know when to stop? Well, there might be a yellow line, but it's hard to see out there. Go and look over there and look at the airplane that's next to you. If you know you're lined up, we are. When you're about level with that airplane, that's probably a good indicator for you could stop. And there's a great way to do that. So look down here, we're gonna do parking brakes. APU is up, let's do engines. Should have done the uh, uh, APU bleed switch over. That looks good, taxi light, turn that off. Engines going down, beacon can go down too. We're also gonna turn off fuel pumps. Lots more fuel pumps in this airplane. Fuel pumps are going off. Look down here. We can go and hit the ATC button, turn off traffic. Traffic is off. You can also come up here to the upper right. Standby. Go to tuning. So we're, on, we're now on standby. Come over here. Return. Ground ops. Ground services chocks, external power, air stairs, and we can call a loader and we'll request the loader. Outside we go to the airplane and it put us in the building here. And if you look over here, 
We have got a ground power unit. We've got a door so we can get off the airplane. We also have uh, the door opening, the loader, and we can unload. Now, at the my hometown airport, they actually fly this airplane, the Airbus A300 um, package version. At that airport, it's a little bit tight for this airplane, so they actually bring the stairs over here on this side of the airplane. So they don't do the stairs over on this side. Okay, you can see this thing is coming up. As that thing gets to its level, this thing comes up here. And if you can look down here, you'll see where it says unload. Click unload. Oh, it's not, it's not ready yet, apparently. I'm not letting us hit unload yet. I think we're waiting for that thing to pull up. Up oh, now it says, now when it's gray, you can do that. When both of those are green, you're good to go. You'll come up here. We do have external power. We can punch in external power. So that looks good too. If it's a nice day in the neighborhood, we'll turn off the window heaters. That's great. And then at this point, uh, we should all, I should have also disarmed the uh, emergency exit lights for uh, coming on in. We'll leave the APU on. It's, you know, it's hot Atlanta. We want some air conditioning. But the big thing I want to see here, let's go ahead and hit the clear button. Might have to hit it twice. What's our fuel? 6.8. Remember what I obsess about on these things is my, um, is my uh, arrival fuel. Let's look over here and check it out again. Look at the bottom, REMF, remaining fuel. I should have had 7.2, eek, 6.8. So I missed it by a little bit. I don't know if that's something that I'm doing wrong, but it is just sort of the way it goes. I really would like those numbers to be a little more accurate, particularly if I'm going to do an event like Cross the Pond or a big VAT sim Chicago to Atlanta or Heathrow to uh, Paris. I really would like those numbers to be a little bit closer. So that's kind of the way those, those all seem to work. And there you go. Uh, there is a cold and dark flight uh, with the uh, version two of the uh, Anybuilds A300. I think that like the Beluga and the A310 Anybuilds has got three really, really great airplanes. And I'm, I, you know, I'm pretty geeky about those. And I hope you are, uh, you know, you get to have a little bit of fun with them uh, as well. So once again, uh, the way things work here, uh, I always like to say this is not the right way versus the wrong way. This is what work, works for me. Um, I'm still relatively new here on YouTube. Uh, so that means uh, I read and respond to all questions and comments. Uh, and so um, if you've got a question, a comment or something, I can either redo the video or do a whole new video if you've got a question. Also, please think about joining me over on the Spy Flight on Twitch TV, 757 Spy. We fly every day, um, uh, Tuesday through Sunday at 1900 Zulu. Uh, you are always welcome to fly along. There is a great community. There's also a uh, link over on Twitch. Uh, to uh, the Discord server, and there are some really knowledgeable people on the Spy Flights Discord server, and they're going to be able to help you figure out uh, any questions you might have, even if it's late at night. There's people on 24-7. If you like the video and you want to support me, as I said, I'm new here on YouTube, so uh, likes on the video are always appreciated, but if you'd like to do some more support, come on over to Twitch and become a subscriber. Uh, that is really how you can put some jet fuel in my flight plan. And at the bottom there, it says I got some spy stories on novel uh, on Amazon. Um, we'll talk about that over on the other uh, on the other channel. In the meantime, if you take a look, the airplane is slowly unloading. Pilots are heading to the pilots' lounge. I don't know if FedEx gives their pilots chocolate chip cookies, but they should. And thank you very much for watching. I hope this helped out. I hope you are having fun with this. That's what uh, ninety percent of this is. And uh, I'll see you again here on YouTube and uh, pretty soon over on Twitch. Thanks for watching. Cheers.